Cyclone Ball Club. Now she is a player who has done it all. Her name is etched in the record books. And over the last eight games, you can tell the sense of urgency that she feels. She stepped it up even more. Coming back to use up her final year of eligibility, Trisha Cullop in her 15th year at Toledo has taken the Rockets to their second NCAA championship under her reign. 16 game winning streak for them. Last loss, January 18th. At rival Bowling Green, the team that they eliminated to win the MAC championship. And we are underway in Knoxville. Iowa State on a great tear of their own, winning four in a row, including beating Baylor, Oklahoma, and Texas in order at the Big 12 championship. Ashley Jones with the miss. And here come the Rockets. Goss nails it. Kara Goss, the younger sister of Bria, who you might remember playing at Kentucky gets the three to get things going for the Rockets. Emily Ryan, such a talented point guard. But keep your eye on Kanisha Lockett with the ball. She was the Mac player of the year. And a charge call on Jessica Cook. Trying to set a screen. Cook goes out early. And Garcia comes in. It's kind of a one-two punch at that position for Coach Cullop. A one-two punch in different dynamics. Nan Garcia, the ability to stretch the floor and shoot the three, where Cook is primarily a back-to-the-basket low-block player. So an interesting matchup for Kane inside. Here's Ashley Jones, guarded out there by Sammy McConowitz. And that's a terrific look. Jones into Ryan. And you will see the adverse on that. Ryan the Ryan to Jones. Jones. Yes. Wired, yes. Look, this is a very poised and confident Toledo Rocket ball club. They are not going to shy away from Iowa State. This is a program that over the last two years, 57 wins. So, so they know how to they know how to win. They know what it takes. Good work underneath by Morgan Kane. Here comes Lockett. Just checking into the game, Garcia took a three. Let's see Donarski over to Jones. First points of the afternoon for Ashley. First in the Big 12, ninth in the nation in scoring. 21 and a half points per game. And on a tear lately. Lockett has Emily Ryan is being a pest, getting in there, ultimately resulting in a tie-up, but the alternate possession will keep it with the Rockets. Nymir <laughs> Dew coming in off the bench for Iowa State for Morgan Kane. Difficult shot, but the scoop almost went in for McConowitz. Jones, wow. The way she's shooting the ball, Pam, that is too much space. Trisha Kolop talked about her. We have to be able to slow her down, and you got to stay connected. Travel. Gives it right back to Iowa State. And Ashley Jones has been shooting the ball incredibly well over the last five, five to eight games. And right there, there's just too much space. She knocks it home. And with that three, she has moved past Elena Deladon to ninth on the all-time scoring list in NCAA history. Deladon, the former University of Delaware great. Emily Ryan now with a couple of buckets. It's 
good to see Emily Ryan get going. She struggled in the Big 12 championship game against Texas as Sophia Wired has the answer. And then stays for the pose. Wired, a very gritty senior from Muskegon, Michigan. Now the turnover. Goss gets it back. Wired, McConowitz, good fake, but then ran into Ashley Jones. Ball stays with Toledo. Wired with the nifty move into the basket. Well, notice how every Toledo ball player, every time they touch it, the shot fake. You, you get Iowa State to bite just a little bit, and that opens up that driving lane, and Wired with a tough finish with the offhand. Jones now backing up after posting up. Donarski. Always tough as nails. Wired with the basketball. Has scored the last 10 points for Toledo. Okay, Sophia Wired, lighten it up. You can see that little bounce. She was rhythm into that shot. Yeah, a very confident player. Had a chance to chat with her briefly yesterday. Do. One-handed floater goes in. High the ball game up. Wired that time looking for contact. Now directing traffic. Jones. Had it blocked initially, stayed with it, and finished with her offhand. I don't mind this pace, Pam. Getting up and down the floor. It's <laughs> a lot of fun right here. Tied up at 13 apiece, just over the midway point of the first quarter. Winner gets Tennessee on Monday. Lock it. A little bit too strong, and now Ryan. All right, Jones wanting it on the post up, draws contact, and will head to the free throw line. Sophia Wired off to a great start for the Rockets. She certainly is. Trisha Cullip says she's such a smart, high IQ player, and she's lighting it up early in this ball game. The three and the pose. Strong drive and finish with the left. For watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One underway here in Knoxville. It is a Seattle three regional first round game and already some fireworks. Ohio State beating Toledo, leading them by two. Toledo coming in as the MAC champion, the Big 12 champs, Iowa State. Pam Ward along with uh, Stephanie White and uh, Ohio State. We all know about uh, the great Ashley Jones, but Sophia Wired has got off to a great start for the Rockets. Ten points already for Sophia Wired. She has been aggressive to the rim early, knocking down a couple of threes. And of course, Iowa State has Ashley Jones, who has been the all everything. Her name etched in the record books and seven points early in the ball game. They've given her the ball and let her go to work. Ashley Jones, who uh, came back to use up her final year of eligibility, averaged 27 points and 11 rebounds on her way to the most outstanding player acknowledgement in the Big 12 tournament win. The first Big 12 tournament championship for Iowa State since 2001. They won back-to-back -back years at the turn of the century. Well, Bill Finley talked about this. He said, you know, for the first time in a long time, you're not going to the Big 12 tournament to play second place to Baylor. Baylor had won so many with Kim Mulkey there and Nikki Collin coming in. And it's just uh, the opportunity presented itself to be a wide open race. A nice drive to the bucket by Jada Jansen. Senior from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, in her second year at University of Toledo. Toledo won the regular season championship and then beat arch rival Bowling Green in the final of the tournament, the MAC tournament. Danae Fritz with the drive. Let's look at who is on the floor, brought to you by Capital One. Lockett is one of the stars for Toledo, the MAC player of the year. 
Sophia Wired with the ball in her hands, off to a terrific start. Joined now by Jansen McConwitz and Garcia. Jansen coming into the game, why not? Tina Jansen had 11 in the MAC championship game against Bowling Green and 16 against Kent State in the semifinals. So there are a lot of different weapons on this Toledo ball club that you certainly have to be aware of. Five quick points for her. Emily Ryan, the point guard for Iowa State. They're going to get wired with the personal foul. As Fritz ended up on the floor. Wired is quite an athlete. She played football growing up and baseball. Didn't want to play softball. And she, we asked her if she played linebacker and some uh, running back, positions like that, and said preferred li linebacker because it's better to hit than to be <laughs> hit. <laughs> That's right. She certainly did. And look at that right there. She, she said, back in those days, I was bigger than the boys. And look at her laying out right there. Wide right for Jones. One of those kids with the parents were a little whiny about her being so good. <laughs> <laughs> against their sons out there on the field, but she's tough. Just tough as nails. And Good. You can tell that toughness when she's out here playing. Yeah. And, and really a great floor general as well for this Toledo team. Emily Ryan, a terrific point guard for Iowa State. The core of this group has been together for several seasons. Great defense to bottle up Jones. Looks over at Coach Cullop. Shot clock winding down now for Jansen. Rebound for Morgan Kane, getting a lot more playing time since they lost Stephanie Suarez. I think you're going to see this matchup. Morgan Kane's going to be in the ballgame when Jessica Cook is in the ballgame because that's a low block matchup. When Toledo brings Nan Garcia in, that's a difficult matchup. And Morgan Kane gets a two down, down low. And Morgan Kane is a player who, up until last year, no double figure games, didn't get a lot of minutes, but got great experience a season ago. So when Stephanie Suarez goes out with, with injury, Kane had the experience to come in and give this team a solid interior presence. Yes, in fact, she had not started a game in the first two years of her career until last season. Suarez, boy, what a loss that is. Tore her ACL at Oklahoma January 8th. A terrific player. Stephanie Suarez, projected top five pick in the WNBA draft, was averaging 14 and almost 10 rebounds a ball game. He just was an outstanding asset to this program and really the missing piece. To, they didn't have an interior presence. We're missing that, that, that lockdown post presence on both ends of the floor. Stephanie Suarez gave them that. When you see the numbers that she had. She's sitting over there on the bench. Kid from Brazil. Started her career there, Steph Stephanie, right in the middle. And call her Steph. Um, played at the Masters College where family members had played basketball. Iowa State had been recruiting her before that decision. And we had a chance to see her early on out west in Portland. And she was tremendous. Absolutely. And you, you think about how good she was early in her first really true Division I ball games. How much growth she would have had throughout the season and playing in the Big 12 Conference, her versatility, her skill set. And it took Iowa State a little bit. You know, they were kind of gut punched after they lost her. And it took them a little while to figure it out again. Now they are hoping that Stephanie Suarez can come back and play next year. That's in the hands of the NCAA. Maybe some sort of a decision next week. Do called for the foul. But it's scary to think, I mean, they're already really good with the Big 12 champs, but if they had Suarez with them, just a whole different look for them, a whole different weapon. And Iowa State hadn't traditionally had a low block presence like Suarez, not just scoring the basketball, but the defensive presence, the ability to have a rim protector, which allows you to take more chances on the perimeter. And Bill Finley told us, he said, you know, we went through a, a tough time. And he said, in those, some of those games that we lost, we were fouling a lot on the road. And 
when you're used to having somebody behind you, you can take some chances without fouling. And when you're not, it puts a little bit more pressure on you. And, and, and they did have to figure it out. And they finally did with a nice stretch at the end. Lexi Donarski, not a happy camper. She just picked up her second personal foul. Heads to the bench. Garcia after a nice look from Jansen. And that's a good look for Garcia on the interior. She does have the ability to stretch from the three-point line, but she also has the body to be able to bang inside against Neymar Du. Ashley Jones time. Missed it. The heave from Lockett, Iowa State. The number five seed in the Seattle Three Regional up by three. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Celebrations on Selection Sunday. Toledo, the MAC champs, Iowa State, earlier in the day won the Big 12 Championship and there was much rejoicing as they found out they were number five seed coming here to Knoxville. Some of our storylines, Tennessee with a convincing win over St. Louis, the Billikens with a great season, their first appearance ever in the big dance. Toledo here for the first time since 96, and Iowa State trying to go back to the Sweet 16 for back-to-back -back seasons. Well, they lost to Creighton. Creighton was not kind to teams from Iowa last they year in the NCAA no. tournament. Beating the Hawkeyes on the home floor. That is the 10th shot already for Ashley Jones, Pam Ward, and Stephanie White joining you from Knoxville. Game two in our first round. The Seattle Three Regional wired. Got off to a hot start, has cooled off a bit since. And Toledo down three, even though they're a leading scorer and player of the year in the MAC, Benicia Lockett did not score in the first quarter. And only had one field goal attempt. So not getting a lot of opportunity. There she is with the basketball. Attacking. And she is so good and dangerous in transition. You know, her ability to get downhill and in finishing in traffic. Lockett out of Omaha, Nebraska. Never heard of Toledo when they started recruiting her. Not the school, the town. Didn't even know it existed. Fritz, who is from Maryville, Tennessee, just south of Knoxville, now, gets the bucket. I've heard Holly Warlick say the people in Tennessee call it Murrowville. Oh. Mur Murrowville, Tennessee. Okay. Uh -huh. Murrowville, Tennessee. Oh. Nice look. Come on, Wired. Terrific pass into McConowitz. But certainly, Danae Fritz has a large contention of family and friends in the building. Well, there's quite a, quite a few vocal Toledo fans sprinkled in. Well, this is just a terrific take in transition by Lockett. And then outstanding execution, the back screen, miscommunication, no help, and wired delivers to Sammy McConowitz. Wired with 10 points to lead her team. Ashley Jones with nine for Iowa State. Espen Miller McGraw with the turnover. Again, Lexi Donarski not on the floor. She picked up a couple of fouls in that first quarter. Izzy Zingaro, number 15 in white, in as well now for Iowa State, giving them some height at 6-4. Posting up, got the ball to her. Rebound absolutely ripped down by McConowitz. Sammy McConowitz can get up. I mean, she's 5'10", she's playing that, that post position, but she is incredibly athletic. Corey Lockett's fast. And good eyes to find Garcia. Six lead change in this game. 
Kenesha Lockett is an outstanding scorer, but she does such a good job of finding her teammates. She draws multiple defenders. She's able to deliver the pass. Another turnover. Wired. Garcia likes to shoot from there. Nothing but white jerseys underneath. again to Ingaro. No foul call. And a foul eventually called against the Cyclones. Kenesha Lockett so good at getting downhill. And right there, just the rotation was read perfectly. Nan Garcia steps in, and they get an easy two. You can't keep up with Lockett when she gets no. going downhill like that. You've really got to try to get on her right hand to force her a little bit out of her comfort zone. And there you see the numbers on Lockett. Coach Cullock went to look at another player and said that there was a, an adjoining court, and she heard all this excitement. People cheering looked over, and they were cheering for Lockett. And that is how she discovered her. Again, Lockett didn't even know what Toledo was. It's playing in one of those side gyms at an AAU tournament when you don't play in one of the, the high name AAU clubs, kind of like John ja Morant. That's how John ja right. Morant was found, playing in one of those side gyms. And, a, and an assistant coach goes over and, and sees him play and gets the head coach over right away. <laughs> and Lock, Lockett said as soon as she got to campus, she knew she wanted to go to Toledo. Garcia with another shot from the outside. It's a 7 nothing rocket run. I was gone over two minutes without a point. Due back in for Zingaro. Kane. Oh, missed her in yep. there. She was working really hard. You got to be able to deliver that pass. Steps. Taken by Fritz. Sophia Wired finding Nan Garcia, and Morgan Kane is just off because she's trying to help on a drive, and Garcia is able to make her pay. And Nan Garcia shoots at 38% from the three point line, so she's a player you certainly have to be aware of. And I think this is where you continue to see this substitution, this chess match, bringing out Nymer Du, who can be a little bit more of a perimeter defender than Morgan Kane. Switched off now on the locket, who drives anyway and buries it. Iowa State in its last five possessions, three missed shots and a couple of turnovers. Du working on Garcia, can't get the roll. Wired. All the way through the lane. Found Lockett. Pam, this is such a heady, heady play by Sophia Wired. So many times when players take the ball on the baseline, they pick it up. Wired kept it alive. She knew a cut was coming, and she was able to find Lockett on the dive to the rim. And you don't know how many times coaches big players along the baseline to just keep it alive. Go out the other side. NCAA Women's Championship continues with first round games today. Runs through Sunday, April 2nd. Every game on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Lock it one out of two. It's now a 10-0 Toledo run. Narski back in there playing with two fouls. Lost her footing because she herself was fouled. And Donarski is another one of those kids, right? High motor. Caitlin Clark had two games in which she didn't score under 20 points this year. One of them was because that kid was guarding her. Well, Lexi Donarski <laughs> is an outstanding defender, Big 12 all defensive team. She gets the check. Team's best score night in and night out. She finds ways to make them uncomfortable. Oh, another foul behind Ashley Jones. Okonowitz called for the foul, but Toledo's in the lead. Benicia Lockett so quick, getting to the rim, strong finish. And Sophia Wired finds Nan Garcia for the three.
Lillard has got it going early for the Rockets. 10 points in the first quarter. She was getting into the paint. She was knocking down threes and striking a pose. Two or three from the three-point line. I mean, this kid is just tough as nails. Scoring early and finding her open teammates here in this second quarter. The ultimate competitor for Trisha Cullips Ball Club. And there you see the score. Toledo on this 10-0 run up by seven here in Knoxville. The winner will get Tennessee on Tuesday night. And what's at stake? They're trying to tie their program record with their 29th win of the season. They also would set a new program record for consecutive wins and would have their first victory in this tournament since 1996. Last went to the tournament in 2017. Defensive effort, Iowa State hasn't scored now in over four minutes. Trying to get it inside, looked like it went off of Donarski's foot, but a kick has not been called. Ashley Jones might have gotten away with a walk, but the shot didn't go anyway. And then on the other end, it's Lockett. Transition defense has been key. Cyclones not executing it. Toledo's able to get out in transition, push, and get some easy buckets. A step back for Donarski and a travel called by Lockett after the rebound. Kalisha Lockett had one field goal attempt in the first quarter. Did not score it. Now she's getting out in transition. She's getting to the rim. She's fast with the basketball. Seven points, three or four from the floor to go along with five rebounds. Mac tournament MVP again, the player of the year during the regular season in the Mac. Well, Ashley Jones is three of 11 from the floor for Iowa State. And Iowa State also is a team that relies heavily on the three-point shot. They've only hit one so far today. Lockett gets her own miss. Gets her own miss again. But could not capitalize. And Trisha Kolop. As Donarski finally ends the drought, Trisha Cullip said that they wanted to make life difficult for Ashley Jones, and so far they have. Jones, We're taking up space. Yeah, pardon me, Jones off the floor right now getting a break. Taking up space, they're sending secondary defenders, they're not allowing her any time to really react. And on every drive, they're collapsing, and they're staying disciplined. You know, one of the things Trisha Cullip said was, we have to keep them off the foul line. We've got to stay disciplined, stay straight up. Shot clock is dying, wired, runs into Dew and draws the foul. Such a heady player. Sister played basketball at Grand Valley State. Here's Ashley Jones coming back into the game. When she's out of the game, she's not out for long. She can't afford to have her out for long. I mean, she really just, every defense is is geared toward her, her ability to score the basketball, the way she moves without the basketball. She's she's the glue that keeps this team together. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship second round continues today on CBS, TBS, and TNT. For information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com, wired one and two from the line. Iowa State being outscored by 11 in this quarter. They've only scored four points in the second. Jones gives it up. Espen Miller McGraw. Wired reached in. And picked up the foul. Second one on Wired. Sends Espen Miller McGraw to the line. Coming up on half time at halftime, degree in the studio, Miami and Oklahoma State in a thriller. UConn rolling over UVM. I know Katie Myers team got down early against Oklahoma State. Lots of great basketball today. Right now, 
Kyle pulling off an upset. Oh, that was a tough shot. Jada Jansen, come on now, coming into the game, she only averages seven points a game, has seven already. But Jada Jansen had a terrific MAC tournament. And for any player, it's really about getting in your rhythm at the right time, finding that confidence at the right time. And the depth of this Toledo ball club gives them an advantage as Lockett continues to be dynamic in transition. Wow, how do you stop that? And after she scored, Wired put her arms up in the air, telling the fans to yell louder. Do much, much needed three. She averages about one per game. Iowa State had missed nine of its last 11 shots. As we approach a minute and a half to go in the half. Another wired pass, smartly done by McConowitz to flip sides under the basket. And that's the second time Toledo's run that play with the back screen and being able to hit McConowitz. Do had a three, took steps. Yes, she did. And Toledo's just doing an outstanding job of executing. They're patient, they're poised, they're getting what they want in their offense, and easy to, and then lock it. So good in transition. One minute to go in the half. Lock it. They backed off, and she took the shot. Big smile for her. And after a very slow start, she's into double figures. Jones. Ashley Jones has missed her last eight shots. Jansen. With the miss, and now Iowa State can take the last shot of the half. Here's Ryan. Dribbling through the lane. And a good finish. And then I believe a foul also called on Toledo. Ryan gets in the lane, she shoots it. What well, I thought was a little early, eight seconds. And it looks like Nan Garcia's arm was caught with Ashley Jones. And they ended up calling the foul on Garcia. And that sends Jones to the line. She gets there on average six times per game. Two for two so far today. What a big call to give Iowa State an opportunity to get four points in the last 10 seconds of this quarter. An Iowa State team that shoots at 80% from the foul line. A team that has depended on threes and free throws for a, a long time under Bill Fenley. Lockett has 11 points here in the second quarter and the ball in her hands. Crosses over on Donarski, left it just short. But Toledo shot almost 60% from the floor in the first half to take a 43-36 lead. Time now for Degree in the studio halftime report. Bounce to go along with her 11 points. And those 11 points all came in the second quarter. For Lockett, Ashley Jones does have nine points, but she has had to work. She's missed nine of her 12 shots. Iowa State, known for hitting threes, only hit a couple of them in the first half. They averaged nine per game, one of the best in the country. The winner gets Tennessee on Monday. Lockett starts off the third quarter in style. Well, you've got to stay in a stance when you're defending Quinesha Lockett. She is just so fast with the ball in her hands. She can get right around you. But there's no help side defense coming in the quarter court for Iowa State. 
So let's see what they can figure to get Jones some shots. Miss the three, Garcia with the rebound. Garcia getting the start here in the second half. Fires away, does have range. Lockett with the long offensive board. And now Sophia Wired sets things up for this Rocket team. MAC champions in both the regular season and the tournament. Shot clock into single digits for Lockett. Found herself some space. Donarski, who's a terrific defensive player, forced the turnover. Jones posting up hard. Good defense by McConowitz. McConowitz just keeping her feet moving, staying active, but Ashley Jones gets a little bit of space. It's only a matter of time before she's going to pop and hit. Ashley Jones coming back to use her final year of eligibility, first in the Big 12 in scoring, second in rebounding this season. Konowitz left it short. Rebound by Emily Ryan, point guard for this veteran Iowa State team. Got a good look, a little bit short. Jones over the back. Sammy McConowitz doing a really good job defending Ashley Jones on the interior and then just relaxed just a little bit. You can't do that when you're defending Ashley Jones. It's a no relax zone it whenever is. Ashley Jones is in the building. The relax zone is over there on the sideline right. when you're sitting on the bench. <laughs> Jones has had such a fantastic career. You see the three she hit after missing nine of them. Following a fast Lockett, such a threat. She goes both ways so equally effectively and quickly. That first step, the burst, and the angle that she takes. She doesn't go wide. She cuts off the defender with her first step. I say if you're defending Lockett, you got to try to send her back to the help. Where did she come from? Where's everybody else on the floor? Send her into her teammates. Wired with the look away and then the shot. First basket of the second half. The thing about this Toledo ball club is they don't hurt themselves. Now, this is a, a veteran group. These starting perimeter players have started since they were freshmen and sophomores as Donarski gets one. But Lockett, she just catches the ball, and all she does is, is that quick little jab, and then she's so fast getting by the defender. And then Lexi Donarski, great job at just backing down McConowitz inside and finishing with the contact. Second foul on McConowitz. Donarski using an 88% free throw shooter, in fact is, coming into this game, missed it. And now Michael McConnell, a shot, or a clock issue, pardon me, with the uh, shot clock didn't move. Michael McConnell joined by Nicole Leon and Darren Kresnick this afternoon in Knoxville, Tennessee with a comfortable win over St. Louis. Michael McConnell, part of that McConnell family. Kathy McConnell, Susie McConnell, Serio. Pennsylvania kids all in the basketball business. And a reach in foul. Second on Goss. Seattle Regional three, Tennessee winning by 45 over St. Louis. The A-10 champs, first time in the big dance, and they are awaiting the winner of this game on Monday. And the winner of that game will go to beautiful Seattle. Little step back. Rims out. I mean, the activity level by Lockett. She closes out on the shot. She crashes in to get the board. She finds Nan Garcia in transition. Garcia with so much confidence from three-point range. And, and you're, a, you're a post defender, so you're used to running back in transition and just getting into the lane. Well, you can't do that with Nan Garcia. When she's trailing the play, you've got to find her at the three-point line. Dew knew that one was off. Lockett got another rebound. Lockett has a double-double in this game. 
second of the season. Biggest lead of the game right now is 11 for Toledo. Make it 13. Jada Jansen. And timeout, Iowa State. The Rockets just building on their lead. Well, terrific execution by Toledo. Nan Garcia, the three-pointer in transition. I think the Rockets are loving that. Like the first one. And now you got to look. Talk to me nicely. Finally here, welcome into the March Madness. We played on ESPN one, <laughs> like the first one. And now you gotta look. Talk to me nicely. South Fordham, keep on dancing. Got oh. it. Princeton pull off the upset. And that is just from day one of the NC. AA tournament and now Trisha Cullop and the Rockets trying to join that. Mississippi State with the win over Creighton. Georgia tonight, Latson out. What a shame. Princeton, Greystone with a three pointer at the buzzer and Florida Gulf Coast today with that come from behind win over Pac 12 tournament champion Washington State. And look what we have going on here. Iowa State, the Big 12 champs coming in. Back-to-back -back wins against Oklahoma and Texas in the Big 12 tournament. They won over Baylor, OU, and Texas all by double digits. And now they're playing the MAC champions. They've hit only three of 15 threes, and they're trailing by 13. Well, that's the difference with, with this ball club. Uh, they are a three-point shooting team, particularly now that there's no Stephanie Suarez. And when you make them, it's really good. When you don't, sometimes you tend to struggle scoring the basketball. They usually, again, make nine per game at a 33% clip. They're at 20% today from distance. Cook bottled up. Still time. That's a foul on Jones. And Jada Jansen has been tremendous coming off the bench. Well, it takes everyone, and the bench production for Toledo has been terrific. Jada Jansen leading the charge. Ashley Jones has just picked up her third personal foul. It's an eight nothing rocket run. They're up 16 in this 12-5 matchup. Jones wanting the ball. She has a chance at a three-point play. Uh, Iowa State trailing Toledo. Timeout in Knoxville. Cornisha Lockett held scoreless in the first quarter, but boy, in a quarter and a half, she has gone to work. Getting out in transition, attacking off the bounce. She is so quick with the basketball and strong on the finish. She's got 15 points to go along with 12 rebounds in this ball game for the Rockets. And Trisha Cullip talked about her and just her energy level day in and day out. And the 12 rebounds has already tied a career high for Lockett. Program going after some firsts. Program record 17 straight win, 29th win to tie a program record they set last year. Ashley Jones completes a three-point play for the Big 12 champs. Ashley's got 17, and her team is down by 13. And Iowa State comes out and changes their defense, go into a 2-3 zone to see if somehow they can slow down the Rockets. Wired one-handed shot, short. Remember, they're also keeping Jones on the floor with three fouls. Ryan inside, Morgan Kane. The defense for Toledo has been rock solid. Ball grabbed by Jessica Cook. Arrow points towards Toledo.
block it. Just blows by everybody. And she's such a good finisher around the rim. She stays locked in on the glass. She stays on balance, good body control. Senior from Omaha has been a starter since she set foot on campus. What a play by Wired to get a hand on that. Jansen, a little bit too strong. Ryan looking for something to get going for this Iowa State offense. That was kicked by Toledo. Cyclones hang on to it. Dew comes in for Kane. Iowa State shooting just 36% from the floor compared to 57% for Toledo. Jones stuffed Sammy McConowitz and you know, that's Jansen on that play but whatever defender they send on her everything's been tough for Jones they're staying disciplined staying down going straight up on the shot not trying to block shots just trying to make life difficult and boy have they ever lock it her career high 13th rebound Do. That's a walk. Or if actually a foul before the extra step taken by Lockett, they get do pardon me for that. That is the third on her. Second year at Iowa State after playing her freshman year at Butler. Lockett with the step back, Jones with the miss. Ashley Jones clobbered as she made a move to the basket and then landed on top of Lockett. going to the rim and Lockett just going up to block the shot, contest the shot. Lockett just picked up her first foul, pardon me. And you see Ashley Jones a little shaken up there. And remember, they don't come back to win this. This is her last game in a Cyclones uniform. But Ashley Jones, one of the toughest players in, in college basketball. For, dislocated her shoulder in a game against Oklahoma, not this season, but returned and played in that ball game. That's the legend of Ashley Jones. Passing Elena Deladon in the all-time scoring list this afternoon. Gets the lead back down to 13. Iowa State led by three after the first, and it's been the rocket show since then. Lockett working on Jones. Stepped around her and got it to fall. Emily Ryan. Lockett stopped her in her tracks. Do with the miss. Jones hit the deck, got tied up with Jansen. No foul call, so the ball goes over to Toledo. Jones showing a little bit of frustration. Has gotten emotional during some games in her career, trying to keep it in check now. Oh, nice read. That shot didn't go in, but that was a really good read by Jansen. I think you got to try to get Ashley Jones some some shots off the move, coming to the to the ball, coming to the rim. Right now, it's either straight post up or straight three point shot. Yeah, there's not a lot of actions towards Ashley Jones, who you would think would be option one. 
At least have her touch the ball every time down the floor. And I think just trying to get her get her moving a little bit without the basketball. Set some screens for her. Try to get her loose just a little bit. Toledo's doing a really good job of, of, of being disciplined. Scout defense one-on-one. -on -one. But if you can get her free with a couple of off-ball screens, maybe she can get an easier look. Lock it out of the game now for Toledo. Wired. Had a terrific first quarter scoring-wise. Now a foul behind the play on Toledo. And there you see Toledo outscoring Iowa State by 18. Trisha Cullop, who went to Purdue University, played for Lynn Dunn, right? I used to watch Trisha Cullop play when I was growing up. She played on Lynn Dunn's Purdue teams with Terry Morin, the head coach at Indiana. Michelle Joseph, who used to be at Georgia Tech. Pretty good team. Pretty good teams. NCAA Women's Championship continues today. First round games runs through Sunday, April 2nd for the championship. Everyone on ESPN Family of Networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Jones, 21 points, her 20th 20 point game of the season. Nine for nine from the free throw line and just stole the ball. She's not passing it to anybody. Got fouled by Garcia. And you gotta be careful if you're Toledo right here because Iowa State, an outstanding free throw shooting team. You give them an opportunity to see the ball go through the net. Had a few possessions down here with turnovers or contested shots. Jones almost automatic from the free throw line, had a chance to talk with her. She's kind of a throwback or an old soul. What you say, she's someone who doesn't live on her phone that much, doesn't check her email. So she likes to paint and read. read. When she's away from away from the court, reads a couple of books at a time. Here's some pressure from Iowa State after the made free throws. Garcia missed everything. And now a chance here, the momentum shifting towards Iowa State. Jones has scored their last nine points. And that's one of those shots where when, when things are going really well, you're in a, in a roll, okay. But when you've had four or five possessions where they've been empty, you gotta make sure that you get a high, high percentage shot. That's big. Lexi Donarski nails the three after Iowa State had missed nine of their last 10 shots from the floor, and they're within single digits. Good defense by Jones. And another Toledo foul. Lashley Jones draws multiple defenders, and Lexi Donarski knocks down a big three. But that's why Iowa State's never out of a ball game. No matter how much they're struggling, their ability to get hot quickly from the three-point line always keeps them in ball games. And then you couple that with Toledo now putting them at the foul line multiple times here in this third quarter. Here's Dew at the line. Iowa State's pulled everybody off it. That was the third foul on Garcia, who has sat down in favor of Jessica Cook back in the game, number 34 in blue. Boy, do missed them both. And she's a 78% free throw shooter. Shot clock off. Step back three, in and out. Iowa State ends that quarter on a 7-0 run to get within striking distance. We're heading to the fourth. The Rockets up eight. Iowa State chipping away at the Toledo Rocket lead because Ashley Jones knocking down a three to get the run started, finishing at the rim, getting opportunities at the foul line, finding her open teammates, Lexi Donarski with the big three to get it inside of 10. Iowa State has trailed by as many as 16 points. That was midway through the third quarter. Pam Ward and Stephanie White 
joining you from Knoxville, and you have the two respective players of the year in their leagues leading their teams in scoring. The winner gets Tennessee on Monday. Seattle three region. Lockett back in the game. Sat out the last couple of minutes of the third quarter. Toledo in a bit of a scoring drought right now. The drop off. They've gone cold and another foul. And you don't want to foul anyway, but you certainly don't want to keep fouling Ashley Jones. Lockett just picked up her second. Well, the difference in the first half and then in the latter part of that third quarter was Toledo was playing really disciplined defense, not putting Iowa State to the foul line. Ashley Jones is 11 for 11 from the foul line, and you let a team and a player get confidence by seeing the ball go through the net. Kane with the finish. Jessica Cook trying to draw the charge. And the officials had nothing to do with that, and the lead's now only six. Jansen. Now you see the hesitation, right? You yep. see the doubt. Yep. Shot clock in the single digits. Now the three, long range, and it backed in for Jansen. Zanarski getting it back, fires away from three, rims out, rebound, Ashley Jones, Morgan Kane cleans it up. Again, Jansen, that one though well short. Emily Ryan. Jones hanging around, there she is. Strong move to the basket. Ball belongs to Toledo. Morgan Kane getting involved inside. The offensive foul not called, and then the banked in three-point shot by Jada Jansen. Hey, whatever it takes, right? At that moment, whatever it takes. They needed that. They have missed seven of their last eight shots. The only one to go in was that bank three by Jansen. Kick by Lockett. last year 29 wins they were 19 and 1 in the regular season in the MAC but lost in the quarterfinals of that tournament or excuse me the semifinals and did not get an at-large bid had to go to the WNIT there's another foul this one on wired that is three on wired who had 11 points in the first half just two since and give Iowa State credit. Their threes weren't falling. In the third quarter, they started going to the rim. They started getting to the foul line. Started getting some easier buckets. Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi heading to Dallas, bringing their inside experience and unique humor with them. The Bird and Taurasi show at the Final Four, Friday, March 31st, and Sunday, April 2nd, live on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. Emily Ryan getting it done at the free throw line. Five point advantage. There's a terrific look and count it. I love the call by Trisha Cullip and her staff. You got to get Lockett a touch, and she just goes in and posts up strong, gets the and one, and you see that emotion, that energy. And we had a nice. 
nice visit with her yesterday. Purple is her favorite color, so she's gone with that for her hair for the tournament. You see the alternating shoe colors, one yep. of each. Said it was just a superstition. She did in her first game, and they won, so she kept it up. Walker with her 13th 20-point game of the season. She's got 22 to go with a career-high 13 rebounds. There she is. And then contact behind the play with Donarski. Nisha Lockett was shut out in the first quarter. 11 in the second, and there you see 11 in the second half, but she just picked up her third personal foul. Defense, 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 Jones. Defense, 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 defense. Iowa State kept the possession alive. Back rim, wired, on the go. Put on the brakes. Now they're going to settle. Yeah, I got the mismatch inside. Not able to deliver it. So now Wired has to be creative. Yep, they're going to get Garcia, who got her hand up towards Donarski's face. That's Garcia's fourth. And Garcia hit some huge threes earlier in this game. Heads to the bench. Jessica Cook back in. Eight point advantage for the Rockets. Donarski. Got the roll. A little nervous time there for the Cyclones. A delay of game warning against Iowa State after the bucket. A look at Bill Fenley, who spent time at Toledo, took his team to three NCAA tournaments. Toya Shaven on his staff was the MAC Player of the Year in 1993 with the Rockets. A lot of ties to this Toledo program. And they're both playing for their seasons right now. Cook drew the foul. Morgan Kane. who could be playing in her last season. Does have one more year of eligibility, but is not planning on coming back. Definitely the last season for superstar Ashley Jones. So whoever wins this game gets to play in front of a lot of people wearing orange on Monday. Tennessee with a convincing win over first time NCAA participant St. Louis. Kane. Bottled up, grabbed by Cook. And that's the third time Jessica Cook has been able to create a jump ball. Morgan Kane exposing the ball. And just really good interior defense by Cook. Ball is exposed, it's right out in front, getting the tie up. Stays with. The Cyclones, Donarski left open. Rebound bounced around, another tie up. Seven point advantage for Toledo, just under five minutes to go in this first round game. Chip is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? To see some of the all-time greats in scoring in the history of this game. Ashley Jones passing Elena Deladon in this game. Rachel Banham is next on the list, but 
we could be looking at the last four minutes and 58 seconds of Ashley Jones' collegiate career. She has her name all over the record book, passing 3,000 points, rebounds, three points, three pointers made in the Iowa State records. But she wants a lot deeper run than this. Jessica Cook turns and gets her first field goal of the game. Oh, and there's a lot of time left. There's a lot of time left. The way that Iowa State shoots the, the basketball, they've been in, in the penalty. They've gotten opportunities at the foul line. They'll be there shortly if Toledo continues to foul in this fourth quarter. Fritz from Maryville, Tennessee, got the basket. Jansen, good defense by Jones. where Sophia Wired so good. She understands time and score, when we need to execute. Patience and poise on the floor. Too strong for Lockett. Another rebound for Jones, who has a double-double. Her 16th of the season, 65th of her career. Fritz can't go back to back. McConowitz comes up with the rebound. Lockett going downhill. Some contact, no foul, but she's able to score with the contact by Donarski. And keep going to that. You've got her going downhill off of the, the screens and the handoffs, or you have the play where she was posting up and diving in after the ball. Get her some touches. Jones posting up, they don't get it to her. Three ball, Ryan nailed it. Lockett went down, a little bit slow getting up, but appears to be okay. And the Iowa State fans on their feet, wanting a stop. Lockett, in and out, rebound, King. Jones draws double attention, now three. That left Ryan open. Kane with the old board. And this is what's hurt Toledo in the second half, just not being able to secure a defensive board. And Morgan Kane could not hold on to the basketball. Lockett going downhill, just a slight hesitation. Still on balance. Love the way she uses the glass. And then terrific execution on the other end. Emily Ryan knocking down a big three for the Cyclones. There's that post up play. You don't have her. You can continue in action. Big time contact. Lockett goes down, as does Fritz. Foul on Fritz. A couple of times now that Lockett has gone down in the last 30 seconds. Coach Cullop going to make the move to let Lockett at least sit down. And Cullop's got a personality, doesn't she? <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> Fiery over there, big smile for her. Leading score. Contact before the ball even got inbounded. Sent Garcia to the floor. That is the fourth foul on Dew. Four team fouls now on Iowa State. So the next one sends Toledo to the line. Wired. Big offensive board for Goss. Fresh 20 seconds as we're inside two minutes. Kara Goss has been sitting over there for a long time on the bench, but coming in and making a huge play for her team. 
And now setting a big screen. Wired doesn't get the roll. Ashley Jones with yet another board. Got to find Jones. Bounder, too strong. Rebound, Jansen. Inside a minute and a half. I wouldn't let Lockett sit over there for very long. Yep, she's getting up. <laughs> content to use up every second. Jansen, that's a tough shot. Somehow drew the foul with five seconds left on the shot clock. Fourth foul on Lexi Donarski. Donarski with 11 points in this game, but has missed five of her six threes as a team. Iowa State, five of 25. Jansen with the free throw. Toledo trying to get that 29th win that would tie a record they set last year. A new record for win streaks. But most importantly, advancing to the second round. Jansen, 17 points off the bench. That is just two off her career high. Set earlier this season at Akron. And right now, Ashley Jones, with just over a minute to go, her team down eight points. Jones said she came back to not just get her degree, but to play one more year with this team. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. It's Quenisha Lockett. 24 points, 13 rebounds. Every time Toledo's needed a big play, she has made it. She is just so quick off the bounce with the basketball, able to get wherever she wants, whenever she wants. It's a great job of staying on balance, using the glass, and of course, bringing the energy. And that is what she has done, the native of Omaha, Nebraska. Locket the Rocket with a double-double. And are they a I minute like one it. away? I like that. Locket the Rocket Lock playing the rocket. Tennessee. But yes, Iowa State is a team that can score in bunches, but the three ball has not been falling for them this afternoon. Well, they made that great run in the Big 12 tournament. Largely because they were knocking it down. It was raining from three. That's a foul over the back. Number four on Sophia Wired. First round wins by double digit seeds. This is this year alone. Already had Florida Gulf Coast. That's a 12 5. Princeton, Georgia, Mississippi State also pulling off upsets. Florida State, though, without Tania Latson, which was unknown when the seeding came out and most of us filled out our brackets. Right. <laughs> Here's Janarski. And, and again, if you're Toledo, you've got to be able to defend without fouling. Now you give Iowa State an 80% free throw shooting team an opportunity to score with no time coming off the clock. And they're in the penalty for the rest of the ball game. Yep, but they are, as you mentioned, an excellent free throw shooting team at 80% as a team, best in the Big 12. Just under 57 seconds to go. You certainly got to make sure you know, your Toledo execution is at a maximum. You're setting good screens, you're not moving, getting the, making sure you're getting the ball inbounds, anticipating a foul to be able to extend the ball game. Well, Bill Finley is one of the best in the business at after timeout execution. So if he can get opportunities, and Toledo a great foul shooting team as well, but certainly he can get his team shots at any point. They were running through execution in the half court, getting three point shots in practice yesterday, and they had a lot of different ways to do it. Right now they need a stop. Down six. Of time getting in, they eventually do to Garcia back in the game 
with four personal fouls. And Dew has just fouled out of the ball game for the Cyclones. She's a junior, she will be back next season, leaves with five points and four rebounds. But she missed five of her six threes. Espen Miller McGraw comes in, senior from Indianola, Iowa, which is not far from Ames. ones for Nan Garcia, the Penn State transfer, second year here at Toledo. Toledo had a big win during the regular season. They sure the did. people in Ann Arbor remember. Yes, at Michigan. <laughs> they played Duke really well at home. I mean, this is a this is a team and a program that, that created a schedule in Trisha Cola that prepared them for the NCAA tournament. And right now, Bill Finley talking to his team. Again, they ran through play after play after play yesterday in practice. They got them open threes. So they get an opportunity to get a quick three or a quick score and then turn it around with a foul. You see the big difference in the bench points. That's Jansen and Garcia alone combining for the 29 points. And the Iowa State fans knowing that time is running out. Tanarski, Ryan, three, missed everything but the backboard. Desperation time, Espen Miller McGraw, kicking it. Rebound, secured by McConowitz. Iowa State took it away. Finally, they get a bucket, it's Fritz. But a lot of time That's went 20, off the 20 clock. 20 seconds off the clock. And now you really just need a quick score and a foul. You need to extend the, extend the clock. You don't have to have all of those three-point shot opportunities. You got to get a quick score and a foul, but 20 seconds running off the clock, that's a lot of time. Well, now Trisha Cullip going to advance the ball again. Most important thing is to get it in bounds. You've got plenty of timeouts. If you can't get it in, make sure that you utilize it. Iowa State, we've talked about their three-point shooting woes all game. They've missed six straight now from distance. Ashley Jones, look at that, that left shoulder. Scars, bruises. Well, she is certainly the epitome of everything you want in a college basketball player, a college athlete. Brilliant career, a kid from Iowa City. Classy player, heart and soul of a program, laid it all on the floor every year, her entire career. Jansen with the inbound. Able to get it in, and right away, Espen Miller, uh, let's do that again. Espen Miller McGraw <laughs> with the foul. Maggie playing in perhaps her last collegiate game. And it sends Goss to the free throw line. First Rocket ever to be on the MAC all defensive teams in back to back years. Toledo has not been in the tournament since 2017. They have not gotten a win in the tournament since 96, which was the year after Bill Fenley left Toledo to coach at Iowa State. Mark Elin was the head coach at that time. Had come from Xavier. Timeout taken with an eight-point advantage for Toledo. Both teams in the bonus. Iowa State now out of timeouts. Again, if you're Iowa State, you just need to get a quick score and a foul. You know, you certainly you're out of timeouts, so you don't have opportunities to advance the ball. But these are situations you've been in in practice. 
knowing that when you're in this situation, what you're going to run, how you're going to get a shot. They have not shot the ball particularly well, but with the way that they can shoot it, crazier things have happened. You're never out of a ball game. Yeah, 34% for the game, just 17% from three. They usually make a third of them. The winner gets Tennessee on Monday. And Toledo would have some program records, but Tell you what, I think Sophia Wired, she's just thinking, I want to play on Monday. That's right. Dear Toledo, you just stay disciplined. Force Iowa State to hit a tough contest contested shot. You can live with that. You can call timeout. You can advance the basketball. Yeah, two's not going to hurt you right now. You don't want to foul, obviously, right, and stop the clock, give them a freebie. Right. And you want to finish the play with a rebound. That'll work. So Fritz. Knocks down the three very quickly out of the timeout. Just again, really good execution. Fritz gets free just enough over the outstretched hand, able to knock down the three. Didn't take a lot of time, so that's a good thing. And right now, again, you're Toledo. Most important thing is you got to get the ball inbounds. You have one timeout remaining if you need to use it. And if you're Iowa State, your goal is to either force that timeout, get a five-second call, or a very quick foul. And Bill Finley probably talking defense and offense right now with no timeouts. Yep. But they shoot the free throws, make or miss, this is what we're running. Not a cover at all right now. There is your reset. Five-point lead. This is as close as Iowa has gotten, and Iowa State has gotten since the score was back in the 20s, back in the first half. Ryan fouls wired right away. Second quarter, the big difference when Toledo outscored Iowa State by 10. 11 points in that quarter alone for Lockett. Sophia Wired, who got things off to a great start in the first quarter, heads to the line where she can all but salt this away. She does it, gives out a yell. Iowa State, Donarski, Goss with the rebound, and the Toledo Rockets, the number 12 seed, are going to take out Ashley Jones and Iowa State and advance in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1996. The Rockets are moving on. I know you can see the emotion on Trish Pope's face. What an effort by the Toledo Rockets, and what a career by that young woman right there in Ashley Jones. She is going to go on, wants to be an elementary school teacher, was a student teacher last year. Would like to keep on playing basketball, but one of the best you'll ever see in an Iowa State uniform, but too much Sophia Wired. And Kodisha, Lock at the Rocket. They win it. 80 to 73. 